What's up everybody? It's Mike with this old hot rod. My hands are greasy. You know what I'm doing. I'm working on the T. So, I spent the afternoon yesterday getting the pedals situated in the car and uh, ended up getting caught in the rain but that's okay but I was able to get the clutch working it took quite a while and it took several different attempts to actually get it to work because of the range of motion that the, the pedal assembly needed with the push rod and getting the adjustment right and everything else but I'm pretty sure it's good it's hard to tell without you know the car rolling and everything so we'll see what happens when startup day comes and uh, I go to put it in gear the pedals what I needed to do was remove the steering column and as you guys know that was a 46 Ford uh, steering column steering box the whole deal it was cross steer I know a couple people said oh this ought to be interesting to see how he figures this out I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to the steering, like geometry. The turn bump steer, I guess, when you break it down, makes sense. It sounds like exactly what it is. Uh, my buddy Joe was over the other day. He came over to check things out and he actually brought me a mount for that steering box. Uh, cut a section of a frame out of a car. I have it here somewhere. Uh, of a frame that he had at his house it was like a 40 to 48 uh, Ford chassis and it had that exact mount he said I'll never use it if you want it, you can have it so I said yeah bring it over but once we really got looking at things I said to him I don't know how the angle is gonna work out from the pitman arm to the passenger side steering arm and he said that if it's too great of an angle so if you have let's just say here let me use these for instance as an example you have your tie rod here hopefully you guys can see this if you have your tie rod here and this is saying this is looking like the car would be standing up and up and down your your front tires are going to be here so if you have your tie rod here your drag link essentially should be as close to parallel with the tie rod as you could possibly get it mine was going to be like that it was going to be pretty significant on an angle, pretty drastic angle. And what he said, what happens is, with it being connected to the passenger side tire, if the passenger side tire goes up and down, sometimes that will change, essentially change the length of this, of this drag link as it's going up and down. And as it goes up, it may pull the steering wheel. When it comes down, it may push, pull, push, pull, push, and essentially that's where you would get the bump steer uh, I had never really thought much about it so when he was telling me that when the tire may you may hit a bump and it may go up and down and it may throw off the geometry or essentially the length of this and cause the steering wheel to, to actually steer so that's where you get the term bump steer makes sense I hadn't really thought much about that with the amount of room I have between the motor and the frame rail on the driver's side, obviously, I'm limited to get that steering box further forwards. Uh, get you guys away from the sun. All right, guys, so that's where I'm at. That's what, that's what I'm working on. I'm, I think it's a little late in the day to get to work on the steering, so I'm going to kind of just figure out what my best route to take is the least evasive I suppose the easiest kind of and um, just determine that and actually just set my mind to it and go that direction but for the time being I want to chip away and try to get a few other things off my list so uh, yeah so appreciate everybody watching appreciate the support tons of interest in the Model T I love it you guys love it I'm totally digging the way it's coming out appreciate all the kind words and and uh, the motivation. You guys are motivating me to stay out here to keep doing this stuff. So uh, let's keep it going, right? Let's keep it going. So let's uh, 
Let's get to work. I'll find something to do here. All right, so I'm just gonna just threw some clamps on these this radiator real shell. Get some nuts and bolts holding it together because I didn't do that the other day. Let me get that off my list. So we're gonna find lower radiator hoses. I'm going to head up to AutoZone, see if they'll let me go in the back. They used to, and I can kind of just go through the rack and see if there was anything that caught my eye, so to speak, that I might be able to use, but I don't know if they'll allow me to go in the back anymore. It's worth a shot to go up there and find out. So Allie and I will be heading to Carlisle next week. So actually a week from today. Well, today's Wednesday, a week from yesterday. Uh, we're going to be leaving on Tuesday and driving down there Tuesday night. So hopefully if anyone's planning on going to Carlisle, we'll see you guys down there. Uh, I am in row. I am... And my space numbers are 36 through 39. I'm right over near gate C, which is similar to the place I was at last year. Last year I was in row IL, which is the row behind I am. Uh, kind of opening a mat from Iron Trail. Hi. Hi, honey. I'm not in pajamas today. Again? You got a theme going on. Non-pajama theme. In a sweater. I think people love it. In boots. Boots. Real, boots. See these boots? Real shoes. Not my flip-flops. Or my state slippers. Made for walking. Not my state slippers. Yeah. Most people don't know what the date slippers yeah, are. Yeah, we said it on a few. In the past, yeah. On a few of them. So yeah. that just means they have to go back and watch to find out what the date slippers are. Yeah, exactly. Go back and find out what the date slippers are. Date slippers are. Okay. Now drill more holes! <coughs> Once the grill shell gets mounted, it's an official hot rod. this bolt. Oh Wes. We're gonna have to modify a bolt. I'm a bolt modifier. My my job, it's what I do. Alright. So where I drilled those holes in that shell these radiators, they, they work. These aftermarket radiators work okay, but they don't fit like, you know, obviously like a an original 32 radiator would. So I ended up having to drill. I'll show you. I don't know if I can show you all the way in the bottom. But you can see here where the where the bolt's supposed to go. You can see where the bolt's supposed to go. I end up having to drill it in this channel. Right there. You can see it, right? Yeah. It should go there, but the tab doesn't go that far. So they don't make the tabs long enough. They make the top tags tabs too long, but the bottom tabs short. So I ended up having to drill it further back. So I just gotta modify the head. I gotta modify the head of these two bolts and get those slipped in there.
guys, you just slid that bolt in there. So that's, I don't know if it's going to focus or not, but that's the bolt now. You can see where it's just, it's right in that groove. That's what I got to do on the other side too. Still got lots of stuff to do. Well, I grabbed the tie rod from that doodle bug. It appears to be the perfect length. I just have to change the ends on it. Right. Get that one in. Let's get this one cut. I ha actually have an original stainless welting strip hanging up in the wall out in the shop in the big garage that I may end up just throwing on this grill, grill show. I'm going to try to make it look old and original or as old and original as I can. Alright. Alright, so I got the grill shell mounted to the radiator now. What I end up I'm gonna end up having to do is get I have other hoses. Uh these are in pretty good shape. Uh but these radiator these top tubes are tiny. I don't know why they make them so small. So I gotta get another section of hose that fits this with an outer diameter, the same as the inner diameter of this. Put it on, throw some Permatex on it, a silicone, and then slide it on and use it like a reducer. So I gotta do that. Yeah, lots of stuff. All right, guys, I'm gonna go eat some dinner and then come back out and uh, I don't know, get to work, find something else to do. Let me adjust the camera. All right, so I'm still outside. I just went in and ate some dinner. Allie took off and went to yoga with one of her friends. So I figured I'd come out and work on the car a little bit more. Try to just try to get something done. So what I'm doing is I just cut the wire off the passenger side door. And to my surprise, it opened. Um, I guess that's why it was wired shut. So it kind of makes sense. But when I went to shut it, it was, it was hitting probably three or four inches before it was closed so it would hit it was hitting the a pillar about about right here and it was binding on the a pillar so i don't know if the hinges got modified or if the hinges got moved at all in the past but what i did was i went around went with a hammer and just lightly tapped the inner door structure and then i tapped I tapped the A-pillar. I could see on the A-pillar where it was hitting because it was like a, a chalky rust. So I went down. I didn't hit where the hinges were because I don't want to damage anything. But there's a little bit of a like a um, like a protruding edge on the door. So I just went around with a hammer like that, and now. The door closes, however, it won't latch. And it looks like maybe someone had heated the latch at some point. See this spot right here? Looks like maybe someone had tried heating that. So what I'm doing now is, just took a hammer, and I had a screwdriver ready. And I'm just, just tapping, on the, tapping on the mechanism. And I saw it move. I'm sure it's been a long time since it's functioned. I don't exactly know. how these work my, my next thing is probably going to be to try to get these screws out if I can get this latch mechanism out of here maybe I can get it to soak it can soak it and kind of free it up 
I have yet to open the driver's door, but I thought, hey, what the heck, I'll just start with the passenger side for now. And I got it, I got it closing how I want it. Belt, the, the, the gap is pretty good. It's a little higher on the top. A little more on top than it is on the bottom. But, it's not a big deal. said it in the past you got to be really careful with this metal because it's kind of crunchy and it will crack on you so so I got the the lock mechanism is still the catch is on the V pillar and like I said this factory mechanism is here let me go grab some lubricant get this to even move just a little bit all right so I sprayed it with WD-40 that's what I have I have coil I think in the bigger uh, in the little shop up back up top here matter of getting the door to latch. <laughs> Boy, it's close. something huh 100 years old almost comes right out so if that one will come out I bet I can get the other ones out Ain't it? driver's door is damaged got this big crease in it as you can see right here and I have it. All right, so I just got that popped off. Still making progress. All right, let me grab some WD-40. I'll spray these hinges and hit these with some heat. See if I can get this door to open. Let me get some lights on. Now I've sprayed these doors down a few times already, the hinges. That's why they look a little darker as it is. But I have not hit them with heat because I hadn't even tried to open the door yet. So. And I don't want to damage anything by forcing it. Woo! Just want to work this door as much as I can, try to work the rust out of it. That's a victory right there. Uh, I know this is a boring process, but it's pretty awesome. Oh, the hinges are working good. Look at that latch again. 
So like I said, I have another door, so what I'm going to have to do is, it'll be nice to be able to have functioning doors. I've been working over the edge of this door the whole time, and truthfully, it's been a real pain in the ass. So this is going to make a big difference. All right, guys. Looks like a damn horror movie out here with the lights. All right, everyone. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. What is up, everybody? It is Mike, this old hot rod. I'm in the garage. It's Monday night. Allie and I are leaving tomorrow for Carlisle. And I just wanted to get something else done. I want to wrap up this video with something. And uh, I got home late today. I'm trying to find a place to help put the put this. Got home late today from work. And wanted to just jump out into the garage. Still going through stuff, boxes, shelves, and whatnot. Dragging stuff down. Throwing it in the trailer. Uh, so we can leave tomorrow. But I wanted to get to work on this fuel tank. You can see this is the Model T tank. I was just kind of looking in there with my light from my phone to see actually how bad it is because I've looked in there but not like really, really looked in there. It doesn't look all that bad. And what I had mentioned to you guys is I'm going to kind of probably cut right on this seam. Figure if I cut just above this seam, there's some extra material right there to weld to. And then I'm going to go right on the edge of these ribs. And then one of the one of the viewers said to cut all all four sides, but leave a small little piece in the corner to fold it up, because otherwise, if I were to peel this back, fold it backwards, I'd get a crease and probably wouldn't be able to get that crease out of there. I need to make it big enough where I can either get the 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 um, the baffle either out of the tank or re-weld it in. I'll probably because I'm just gonna get right to it. I'm gonna get this cut out just with my my cutoff wheel. And um, open it up, throw a light in there so you guys can see what it looks like. All right, let's get to work. I'm going to find my helmet. I need to put in my air protection. Can't be too safe. The safety police are out there. I don't need them knocking on my door. So that's that. All right, let's get to work. No more talking. Shut up. knew there was a little flange in there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a flange right there, so I'll have something to weld to. Right, so now I'm gonna just go across. some crap in there I show you what it looks like it looks like the inside of a rusty gas tank if you can imagine that so I guess it's not horrible but there's definitely rust in there and I know it would have got in my fuel system so I'm gonna find a wire wheel. I don't really use wire wheels all that much. I probably use them more often. I'm not really confident in my current wire wheel situation. I mean, I guess I could use this. Yeah, you know what? I could probably just use this. This is gonna be messy. Oh my god. I'm gonna end up probably wearing a respirator for this. It's going to be tough to do this in film, but, you know, I'll do the best I can.
I was afraid that was gonna happen. Oh well. All right, back in the shop. Pretty happy. With the way it cleaned up. See what I'm twerking with. So it looks like it's a three step. Step one, fuel tank cleaner. So I'm going to move forwards on the process with step one, fuel tank cleaner. Don't get it on your skin. Don't get it in your eyes. Imagine the instructions said the same instructions, same thing the instructions on the, on the box said. I guess I'm going to dump this in the tank and just kind of clean it around. I think it's pretty good the way it is. I could probably run it just the way it is, but I bought this kit and I'm gonna use it. I think it was a hundred bucks. All right, I'm gonna literally climb on the table to do this. I'm old, I have decrepit knees. So I'm hoping this is gonna go in my favor and not end up with an emergency room trip. Wait 15 minutes. I'm just gonna let this kind of do its thing. I know typically you don't have access to a gas tank, so the fact that I have access to it and I was able to get rid of the scaly rust and get in there and really give it a good cleaning. What's up? I'm back. And my gas tank's wet. I'm gonna rinse it out. Let me see if I can butt it right up against that and still reach this lip. Yeah, I can. Nine and a half inches. Impressive. So dirty from sitting here. That's all I need right there, a little piece of metal, and then, so like I said, I'm just going to cut a little, just make a little flange just to add a little extra to weld to, it'll just minimize the risk that I'll get a leak. said I'm gonna add this little lip here just to make it easier to weld so I have more material to weld to it'll just make things a little quicker it will be there'll be less of a chance I'll get leaks because I'll just have more metal to weld to it'll just be quicker and then I bent up so I ended up cutting this piece in half and then I split that in half also and I'll just throw some clamps on there and get these clamped in place. And I'll be able to weld that panel right on.
pulling forwards towards me because the extra weight of this so I ended up putting the second one on the back to reverse the weight to counterbalance the weight so the tank wouldn't go forwards just nervous because I don't want to screw this up because I don't want to have to buy another fuel tank you guys get it you understand How's that look? Pretty good? Eh, pretty good. Alright, so it's late. It's like, I don't know, quarter past 11 or something like that. Um, the aftermath. I don't know if it's going to leak until I put stuff in it. Well, well, let me take that back. I don't think where I cut it is going to leak. But that... And that are definitely going to leak. There's a lot more pinholes starting to come through. So, what I'm going to do is, I am not going to try to even weld it because this whole area is pinholes. So, this tank liner says it'll seal up holes that are bigger than that. So, I'm just going to... I'm going to chance it. I'm going to try, you know. It says not to get it on your hands. Basically all it is is acetone. We've all got that on our hands at this point. So it says to pour half the bottle in the tank. Treat it like gasoline. I know it's not going to seal because there's no O-ring on the top of this. So there's half of it in there, it says to shake it all around, let it do its thing, and then dump it out, and then take the other half, and then dump the other half in, shake it all around, let it sit for 60 to 90 minutes, so it's going to basically be sitting all freaking night, because I'm not waiting until 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, see it leaking. I'm not waiting till one o'clock in the morning and come back out here. <laughs> I'm getting my exercise in. I don't even think I need to dump it out. It's gonna be coming out of it on its own. I'm just gonna dump the whole damn bottle in there. never really been a rule follower, you know. Why well, start now? This tank's pretty clean. Like I said, I opened it right up, so. Let's get to shaking. Well, let's see if it leaks. Yup. We got a couple holes, people. I knew it was going to leak. I need to go grab a marker. I didn't think I'd get that lucky and not have any leaks. <laughs> That's okay, I'm not surprised. All right, let's try on this end. So, now the problem is, is I put acetone in this fuel tank and there's going to be major, major fumes in here. So... I can't weld it at this point. So, I guess 
It's time for me to say good night. To wish all you lovely people a good night's sleep. Because I may be looking for a fuel tank at Heart at Trog. I'm not Trog. Oh well. So part of the problem was part of the problem or part of where I screwed up, let's let's say that. There wouldn't have been a problem if I didn't screw up. You know? So where I screwed up was right where these beads are. I cut right on the edge of the bead and it lifts up where the bead comes up. Well, it created a void where I welded the edge of my panel. There was a void up inside this bead and the metal just kept burning back. If I had cut it smaller on the flat part of the metal, I would have had a nice area to weld to. So I kind of screwed up there. Paid $30 for this fuel tank. I don't want to give up on it. There's like, I don't know, half a dozen or so holes on the bottom. I don't know how good this sealer works. I can't weld this because of the acetone. It'll be a friggin' bomb. So that means I'm just gonna walk away for, from it for the night. I don't know as if I'm going to get to work on it. It's all cleaned out at this point now, so I think it'll be fine. Calling it a wrap for the night, everyone. That may be it for me before Carlisle, so... Kind of ending on a sour note. This tank may not end up working out like I want it to, but I'm not going to give up on it yet. I'm still going to go back around this, see if I can get... Get this sealed up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of a random little of this, little of that video, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. It got rained out the other day, and I wasn't able to, to really work on the T. Um, but I was able to figure out the steering. I think that cross steer is actually going to work out. Uh, I was able to move that steering box forward about six inches. I'm now able to run the aftermarket headers on it. I did have to modify the driver's side header to fit the steering tube. I'm going to probably modify it just a little bit more. I'm going to use my torch and kind of just heat things up a little bit, move things around. But I'm 99% positive or confident I'll be able to use that steering box. I don't need to cut it down. Um, now that I'm able to move it forward six inches, the steering wheel slid down, slid forwards. I can get in and out of the car just fine. Uh, I actually have more room in the cabin than I thought I was going to, so I don't need to modify the back panel behind the seat. I can actually build a seat right where it's supposed to be. I am going to modify, this, modify the seat pan because I need to be down really low uh, just because that's the look I want. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty, pretty confident I'll be able to run that steering the way it is, the way I have it set up in the car. It's still mocked up at this point. And, uh, just keep picking away at the list. So, we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>